And here we go with season five, session 11, almost to the end of our fifth season of Health, Wealth, and Happiness Mastery. And yes, it finally hit me. I ended up getting COVID. And I have to tell you, I'm going to break down for you all the prep work that I've done. I've worked with Dr. John in our mastery community. I've worked with Marcus from the Chi. He's the homeopathic sort of guru in London and in England. It's going worldwide with his brand. I've worked with a friend of mine who works for Nature's Way, and they create vitamins and so on. And I did all this work well in advance of me ever um, getting diagnosed and positive with it. And I wanted to make sure that I had all this documented somewhere for me just in case I ever did get it or my family did. And so this training today is going to break down for you exactly what showed up for me. I'm going to show you it through the lens of the aura ring and how my vitals changed essentially. And then I'm going to break down for you like some of the symptoms and the things that happen. But then I want to broaden this to an exact health plan, which is why I call this training today, Five Steps to Feeling Better Fast or the ORH operation restore health <laughs> this is the kind of mentality i've created over the years for a vision strategy plan and action list for me and those around me including you to assure that we're on the path of recovery fast before we get started the big goal here anytime we get sick whether it's with something you know serious or head cold or, or something not as serious like a small head cold or something like that our focus is to assure we don't let it get too deep into our being. And what does that mean? It means that it doesn't really derail us, that it doesn't overcome us, so we may have to go to the hospital to get support, help, survival through that lens. And what I've thought about, and this is something that we've taught in our brain work with Dr. Amen, way back in the day, Dr. Amen talked about how you want to keep your brain health above where it needs to be before you start seeing symptoms of losing brain capacity. And so the goal set here, and this is how it broke out for me in the last week, essentially, as of the filming of this, um, it was over the last week that I got it and I went through all the heavy duty piece, which I'll break down for you, and then how I mitigated some of that, and then how I handled it from the beginning, um, how I handled it through it, and how I handle it as I've been coming out of it, probably almost 100% back to normal, still have a little tickle in my throat, and I got a tool, I mean, I've got some uh, tool, I've got a uh, set of things for you, they're all off camera right now that I'm going to go through that will really help, hopefully you, they definitely help me because I test and measure everything, as you know, to understand what really has worked, what over the years hasn't worked, proper application, vitamins, minerals, uh, supplements, over-the-counter drugs, these kind of things that have really helped me through these kinds of things and specifically through this particular event. That being said, this, what I'm aiming for, if you look at this chart, and I'll zoom in on this in our post-production, is this is me feeling like pretty much dead, zero to 10, feeling great, feeling great energy, vitality. This is where I live, especially over the last decade, and I've gotten clear on the principles of high performance, psychology, physiology, productivity, persuasion, purpose, all these things that we're gonna talk about in a minute with our five Ps, and I've really lived into those. Most of the time, I'm feeling eight, nine, or 10, and I just have to say thank you so much to Brendan, our master coach, High Performance Habits, The Charge, The Declarations, all these things have really helped me understand, oh, I was missing this critical ingredient. Oh, I was missing this. Oh, I was missing that. To really get, A, my weight dialed in, but my energy leveled up on a consistent basis. Quick side note, I barely ever get any headaches anymore. Uh, I do have migraines every so often, and I'll go over how some of this stuff today helps for that as well. But they come and they go, and they're, the pain part of it is like a 1 out of 10, meaning 1 being hardly any pain, versus the old days when I lived unhealthy. It was a 6, 7, 8, sometimes a 10 for like 2, 3 days, where I just couldn't even function, those kind of things. So a lot of the principles here are going to help through all sorts of sickness, pain, these kind of things. The concept, though, is that whenever we get sick or whenever I get sick, my aim is to assure that I let it take its course as much as I can, but that it doesn't get too far down. It doesn't tear me up too much, if possible. Now, that's a huge thing with the way the universe works and the way my body responds to whatever I'm getting hit with. But this time around, I was able to get down to a 5 out of 10 for about two days and then was quickly able to rebound thereafter. And I'm just going to break down for you what I think some of the things were that helped 
through that lens. And then hopefully there's takeaways for you. By the end of today's training, you'll have a great idea of here's exactly what shows up on the aura ring through the vitals. You have a great idea of here's exactly the vitamins, minerals, supplements, the throat lozenges. I'm looking over here, the protein powders that I use and the, the organic blend that I put into my shake to really get my cells charged to get rid of the baddies and bring in more goodies <laughs> and feel better faster. And I want to say, um, as I look back through my journey over the last week, that the overarching ability for me to serve, which is always my basis, just so you have a frame, was hindered basically for two one-hour sessions. And what does that mean? In a given week, I'm coaching anywhere from 12 to 18 sessions. This is just my choice. I love the work so much. And this week, there was a day where I just, I, I couldn't serve. And it wasn't because my brain wasn't there, which is a part of this problem when you get sick. It was because I couldn't talk. After um, pretty much 10, 15 minutes of talking, I just became a coughing nightmare. And I couldn't even, it was just a constant itch and a constant drive to cough. And that isn't serving through that lens, even though I can use the mute button like a ninja. <laughs> it wasn't helping in that case. So I moved two appointments to assure that I, I had spacing in between my appointments and that I could reset, recharge, revitalize to make sure that I was still serving through that lens. If things got down here, I would have been calling and canceling. And that's a big thing. Here's the thing though, my health and my ability to serve on that day were those two calls that I did do. There was four total calls that day. I took two of them out. The two that I did do, we had a massive breakthrough with this guy I'm coaching now for three years in high performance. And I thought about it and I was like, oh, I'm really happy we had that. Because she was in a frame of mind to share something she wouldn't have traditionally. And she may have been in that frame of mind and then a week later when we would have resumed our session. But in that moment, in that instance, she was in the frame of mind. We were able to make a ma massive breakthrough that turned into a major commitment for her for five years. For her, her courage, her purpose, and oh, the commitment she made, I cannot share it with you because it's private, but the commitment she made will completely set it so that by the time she looks back on, in, on her life, near the end of her life, she'll be like, I went after this five-year endeavor consistently and owned it. And I so want to share it with you, but I can't. But the concept is really clear. That breakthrough happened through the lens of that. And my sickness or my non-sickness, um, I didn't even tell her that I had anything going on. Um, I didn't have any uh, coughing fits or anything. And, and when I did need to cough, I muted. And I coughed and I unmuted to let her have her thing. It's a huge part to the testament of being a good coach, in my opinion, is we may share that we're not feeling great, but it isn't about us in their journey. It's about them and their journey. And people do care and they're compassionate, but we only have 60 minutes and I want to spend all of that time working on them and moving them forward. If it comes up, and it did come up in one of my sessions um, where they asked how I was doing and all this, and I'm not going to lie, but I said, yeah, I've been dealing with this uh, COVID thing. And uh, so far, so good. I had fever and all this kind of stuff. But I really want to make sure it's about you and your journey. So at the end, if we have time, we can talk more about that if you want. And they're, okay, well, I just want to make sure you're sending you good, healthy wishes and uh, you and your family and so on. And so we have that conversation. That's just my approach. It's, it's really about you and your journey when we're coaching and making sure that I'm moving that forward. That was a great example of that. Here's the thing, though. If this got down to two or one, and I had to cancel all my appointments and move them on, I don't know that we would have had that breakthrough. And I do have to prioritize my health, and I do, but I also have to prioritize making sure that I'm moving people along on their journeys, whether that's in high performance, whether that's in business, whether that's in the internet work that we do, right? We also, during this whole thing, I debuted a brand new site, uh, well, a revamp of a site that had online ordering for a gal who's been working on this for like basically a decade, and we got it up, we got it set, it's on, it's taking orders, she's getting orders and all that stuff. And I never let her know that I wasn't feeling up to par. I just plowed through it, did my practices, we'll go over those practices, and made sure that I was serving. So this is a really great part, a really great way to sort of ignite why I do what I do and how it helped me stay above the mental curve of sometimes when you get sick, your brain just kind of, I'm sick, 
And then inside the I'm sick language, you're just kind of shutting down all aspects of life. And get, don't get me wrong, if that's the case for me or for you, and you have to do that, just because of where you're at in mental space and where you're at during the sickness, then do it. But my goal is to stay above that if I can. And fortunately this time it was a real test, but I was able to. Five Ps, feeling purposeful, feeling passionate, feeling positive. And through that lens, I like to think about bringing joyful curiosity. Even while I was in the worst part of this, these two days, I was still bringing joyful curiosity. I was still looking at this list that I have for when I'm sick, I'll research and do these things that bring me joy. Yes, I have that list. I hope you do too. Um, I'm like, okay, let's go and research some, some of these shows and watch some of them to see if they're a good fit. These are just some things I do to kind of bring in variety and keep me mentally like unfocused on my sickness and focus on other things. And I did try Ozark and it's not my kind of show, primarily because, just as a side note for you, when I'm feeling purposeful, passionate, and positive, I'm not talking about things or, or in rejecting my brain with other people's struggles, challenges, dramas that aren't around things that are generally um, good for society. <laughs> like breaking the law and trying to overcome some of the very negative things that are going on in that TV show. That, the best use of me is to watch Ted Lasso on Apple Plus instead of Ozark on Netflix. And I've watched Ted Lasso a few times because it's all about helping people be the best versions of themselves. And it's giving you new techniques and so on. And it's a great show with a great story and great illustrations. Does that make sense? So I'm like very clear where I want to put my mental energy, even when I'm sick. But I also want to explore all the options to see what's out there. And I did. And I said, so, my, so many of my friends were like, oh, you got to watch Ozark and all that. I'm like, that is not my scene. I'd much rather watch Ted Lasso or every, Everything Everywhere All at Once. We watched that movie two nights in a row, which was just came out, uh, available for you to watch it from home. And we've just been dialing in watching that. And that movie just, I don't even know. I've never been high or taken drugs or anything like that. But I got through it and I was like, whoa, the world feels different. So good. I'll make sure I'll link to it below so you can at least see the trailer. And I watched it. I bought it on Apple Movies and then we watched it. I watched it the first night. And then my daughter Jojo and I, who is also positive or was, I think we're at the end of it, <laughs> um, watched it with me too. So my point with this is even through sickness, even through just getting a hit, still thinking about purpose, passion, positivity, productivity as much as I can, moving things forward for others and for myself, even through sickness. And then the last P, profitable. And that part usually is dialed in because, hey, I'm not really going anywhere or doing anything, so I'm not spending any money. <laughs> but we're really taking care of us through the five Ps. So more, maybe more important than ever, when we get sick, what's the mental attitude that's taken? And so often we, we are so fatigued and challenged. I can't even think about what I really want to learn or grow or do. But I really challenge myself to do that, hopefully to keep the symptoms and the, the degradation of my being at a minimal level, even though it was half. I was at half for two days. Um, that's how I self-assessed it, still worked myself back up, still had fun during the aches and the pain, just the skin, a big part of the uh, problem that I had was it hurt, my skin hurt to touch because I'd been in a feverish state for 48 hours. Um, my, like, just moving like this, uh, uh, my back hurt, breathing deeply hurt, and I've got a extreme, compared to where I used to be over a decade ago, I've got a very deep, um, what do they call it, VO2 max, where you can really take a deep breath and you feel a deep breath. And I was having trouble taking deep breaths, not because I couldn't like breathe like a pneumonia thing, which I have had pneumonia, so I know what that's like, but just because it hurt to open my chest cavity that much and really go after it. So just some of the things that have gone on. That said, living into creating your health plan is really critical. You're dialing in the P's. Let's go to write those in. Purpose. Passion. Positivity. Boy, is that difficult when you're not feeling good. I tell you. <laughs> Productivity. And profit. And I hope you sense as to why. 
so often people are like, oh, I feel like total crap and I'm not gonna be able to do anything and then the mind can take that over to, to enhance the negative so you feel even worse just because you're concentrating and feeling bad. I was concentrating on going uh, and in my brain, the way I work, kind of like a programmer, engineer, I'm like, here's all the stacked symptoms that I've got, starting from the top of my head all the way to my toes. Overall body ache, overall fever, overall can't really move my back right now because it's just, it hurts. Can't take a deep breath. I've got inflammation in my throat a little bit, inflammation of the sinuses. The weird thing with COVID for me, as opposed to a standard head cold, was there was no sign like phlegm, but there was sinus inflammation. So it was hard to breathe because everything was sort of inflamed here, but there wasn't any like real drainage and there wasn't much to cough up when you coughed. It was so weird. And on day three, I woke up about two in the morning and I felt like the tubes between your ears and your nose, where everything sort of vents, if you will, was on fire. Like somebody poured uh, Tabasco sauce on them and they were on fire and I was like, whoa, I was trying to like swallow to offset that. And I'm like, this is not helping. How do I get this pain? So I went out, took some water, and then I did my whole vitamin ritual um, at two in the morning, which meant that I had to eat something that for some of the vitamins, they're fat soluble, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I had to eat something that would sort of open my gateway, if you will, to bioabsorb the vitamins. So we'll, we'll get into more detail about that in a minute. And I did all that. And then I sat for about 10 minutes and it slowly went away. And then I went, and for some reason I was able to get right back to sleep and I woke up, felt even better when I got up a few hours later. And I was like, oh man, that wasn't good. But being real with what, what showed up there was really critical. So let's go ahead and I've got a couple slides for you just so you can see what the aura ring reported immediately. And these are some things that I found very curious. So first and foremost, of course, I did two tests because I wasn't sure I did it right. <laughs> and I was positive on both. Um, day one, my temperature is up 3.9 off normal. Now for me, it is about 98.6. So whatever 3.9 is, is what? Uh, four would be 102 point, so 102.5 essentially. And then the next day was 4.1. Then it went down, down, and then um, beyond that, it was down here like 0.5 up, and then it was zero. Went back to zero on day six-ish. But that showed up on my aura ring. I'm like, oh, something ain't right. <laughs> of course, I was feeling it. It came on like a standard head cold where you feel like, at least the way I, they come on for me is you'll feel in the back of your sinuses or around your sinuses, you'll feel like a tingling and then it kind of spreads. That's what happened. Um, and then through the lens of my resting heart rate, typically I have a very low resting heart rate for people my age or people in general at 40 to 38. And I get all kinds of warnings because my heart resting heart rate is so low, but this is just how I'm built and how I've been built. But immediately it was at 60, like it was 20 beats per minute up and it went up as I walked. I went out safely. I went out and I walked in the park just to get the vitamin D and sunshine. Um, and I made sure, but it was interesting because my normal walking rate is like uh, 80, 85. And it was 20, 100, 105. It was 20 up the entire, um, basically the entire 48 hours. It was definitely up 20 probably for 24 hours. So the heart rate went up, then eventually came down, and now I'm back to almost back to normal. This was taken a little bit ago. And my respiratory rate was checked. And it was the amount of times you breathe in and breathe out per minute. And it was jacked way up uh, from 15-ish to almost 20. So that part, I think, was primarily because I couldn't deep breathe. I usually deep breathe when I'm you know, existing <laughs> and I couldn't cause it hurt. So my body had accommodated for it times the fact that it was dealing with a respiratory issue. So that may have been that situation. Um, so yeah, this is the basics of what showed up inside the aura ring. It was just kind of neat to see how the body's reacting and doing what it does and getting some of the data cause I'm a data guy. So I hope that's helpful for you a little bit. Raised heart rate, raised rep respiratory rate, these kind of things totally normal and temperature as well. So that's the aura ring uh, lessons, if you will. Now let's dive into the training. So five parts to this, and this is something I've worked on over the last decade, because you know, as high performers, we're really in tune with assuring we have a plan 
and a strategy that comes from our best self, even through sickness, making sure we've got that dialed in. So the very first thing that I had to think about, and I always think about when it comes to getting sick, is I have to assure that if, a, if it's possible, and sometimes it isn't because of the way that whatever sickness you have ha is happening, is that I'm getting my seven and a half to nine hours of sleep, and I aim for eight to nine. I up that a little bit. So very first sort of fundamental here I double down on is sleep. Very, very rarely do I take naps, and I took two naps in the last week. Um, and they were both, they register on your aura ring now. It's kind of cool how that works. And it adds to your sleep score and all this. And I took a good hour nap and it broke down the deep sleep, light sleep and REM sleep. And I got all three. So it was really for, um, helpful nap that I took in that regard. Sleep is huge. Hydration, I aim because we, we know the science of this. And that is to flush the system. I aim to have two of these filled with ice or water and then about that much ice. That's just how I like it, <laughs> which is weird for people in Europe, I found. Um, and I'm drinking this like crazy. I'm really looking to flush the system. Let's have a little hydration right now, shall we? So really dialing in. So as my daughter has gotten it as well, I've really worked about every three or four hours. I'm double, we call it double barreling around here. Two of these things filled with ice and water and we're on it. Making sure we're just, it's within arm's reach and we're chugging and drinking and having it and going after it. That's a big one. Eating, this is a really critical piece. I, if it's anything sinus related, including COVID, I assure that I'm not eating anything that enhances phlegm production. And for me, I know exactly what that is. It's um, sugars, but most importantly, any milk-based anything. And I don't usually have a lot of milk because I'm, I'm a little weak around milk in terms of its digestion and maybe I'm lactose intolerant, not exactly sure. We did an analysis and it didn't look like I was that, but milk and I just don't get along, like cow milk. So I'm very clear that stuff's eliminated. So I eliminate the beige out of my diet completely, even though I don't usually eat a lot of it. And I eliminate dairy-based anything. And boy, does that help because I'm uplifting Typically, I'll have my high performance shake, which I'll break down for you in a little bit. Um, I'll have my high performance shake two to three times a week, but I'm having them every other day like clockwork while I'm sick and I have been having them. Um, I've actually had them two days in a row as well because the high performance shake is loaded with everything that makes me feel good. You can, like I've detected when I've had the high performance shake, how I feel a leaner, cleaner level of energy after having it. And boy, is that a necessity when your body's fighting something. Leaner, cleaner energy that's cleaning out the bad. It's got the vitamins, nutrients, and minerals in it that really help through that lens. So to kind of sum that up, first part, if you're going to do what I kind of challenge you to do is create your Operation Restore Health vision, strategy, plan, and action document. That's the first on the action list. The first thing, sleep. And so often, a lot of people that I, I know, and this sounds so weird to say, the people they're with almost sabotage them when they're sick, especially in the front part until they realize it's a real thing. And what I mean by that is they'll be like, you're not sick. You don't need to sleep. Oh, I'm sorry I interrupted while you're sleeping. Like make it very clear. If I go into a mode called Operation Restore Health Mode, um, I'm going to need dedicated sleep, quiet time to taking care of me. Two people I've coached have said, Char, you have no idea how my house is. And that's not even a possibility during the day because of kids and so on. So what they've done is they've gone and reserved a hotel for three days just to get in the front end of the sleep side of things. And they already have that arrangement with their spouse. They're like, we've got that arrangement. We know that sleep isn't conducive during the day in our environment. So I'm going to go shut the curtains, get a hotel room and just stay there and sleep, sleep, sleep to dial that in. And I just want to make sure we're really hitting the notes on what we would classify as the fundamentals here. First one, sleep. Second, doubling down on the water, making sure you've got it. Just pure water. And I like mine chilled. So I'm just chuk -a -chuk -chuk -chuk, handling it, going after it. Eating. I'm removing what I classify as yellow and red foods and staying with the green foods. Green through the lens of kale and that kind of stuff. But green in the sense that it's only nutrient rich going in here. I'm also decreasing the amount I eat by half to three quarters every day. And here's, here's the thing that I've noticed when I'm sick. When I eat just the good stuff, 
my body feels satiated because of the nutrient load in the good stuff and I can eat less, but my body works better at healing, I found. This is a weird side note of just me studying this for the last decade. My body works better when I'm not buried with trying to digest food, but rather digesting the nutrient-rich food minimally compared to working, giving the body all energy, all forces to heal. Does that make sense? That's just worked for me. That may not be your scene. I don't know if you've tested and measured that. So sleep, hydration, eating, very heavy-duty fundamentals. Second, through the list of the fundamentals, as we think about exercise and so on, is that, and I'll refer to it down here as burn it out. If it's a bacterial infection, like a, I'll get an ear infection or something like that, and I determine that it's not going to blow my eardrum or whatever that would be. I've had that problem in the past. I didn't blow out my eardrums, but I almost did. Um, I will go out and I really try to keep the exercise routine and rev my heart and cough up stuff. So I'll go out for a run. Um, just like I usually do, I'll try to keep the speed the same depending on how my body feels. If not, just hopping along is cool. And I did this on just before the fever started to really spike on day one. I went out and I ran um, two miles. It was slow, really slow. But I ran two miles being, the idea was is to get whatever is starting to form within me out. Uh, phlegm wise, I didn't realize it was COVID at first. So I was really just trying to get through that. And that's just my practice. If I can run, I do what I call burn it out. That's helped big time where um, the old version of my colds and so on would last three to five days with the heavy duty stuff hitting in day three, four, and five. And I'm able to sort of mitigate three through five by hitting in the front end with exercise. And again, I'm not exercising around people. Like I'm not in a closed place. I, this is one of the reasons I love running is I'm out in the park running and I'm staying way away from everybody. And I'm making sure when I get to the park and back that I'm way away from everybody as well. Um, e even if I'm just sick, not only with being COVID positive. Does that all make sense? So I just want to make sure that helps. And I hope this is helping you kind of lay out a plan. Because here's the thing we know. And I hope I demonstrate this from the beginning. If we're in a position to help others be better in life and in business, I feel incredibly a heavy sense of responsibility to assure that the, minimal, the amount of time that I'm sick is minimized so that I don't degrade their growth. Does that make sense? It's really, that's just my commitment to humanity. I do not want to degrade other people's growth, other people's sales, because of my sickness. And I work diligently to stay healthy. You're, you're in, you're out now. Um, and then when I get sick, I got a real heavy duty plan. That's what we're reviewing it today. So I just got a real clear idea here of what I want to make sure I'm trying to accomplish. And of course, life shows up. So if if I get down to a zero, one, or two, or I end up in the hospital, that's my destiny. And I'm good with it. And through that lens, I'm not going to be able to call you and talk to you <laughs> and help you. I'm good with that. But if I can accommodate and take care of me in a better way, you can bet your bottom dollar I'm on it. Does that help? That's just the equipment I have. That's where I'm sitting. And I think you know that. We've been on this journey for a while. It's, it isn't our first rodeo. Going after it. So that's a big piece to this. Sleep, hydration, and eating. The other part that used to really send me sideways was this time where neutral and negative energy would permeate and just keep building over the course of the sickness. So if you were to run a similar map with your mental, your psychology, zero, trashed, 10, owning it, by day two, for me, previous to high performance in my life, previous to 10 years ago, um, I would be in the dumps day two and three, when is this going to end? And I wasn't having any of the practices to feel better and do better. I wasn't putting in any of the practices that I put in now, um, which is primarily driven from the last question I have for us. What do I want to do? Uh, what do I want to learn? How do I want to grow? Even through having some time where I'm just chilling out, healing. Um, and this is really critical towards that piece. So part two is making the core goals of keeping our emotions, our spirit, and our mental capacities on the up. So really critically, I've sort of peppered this in as we've come through this, continually thinking about joyful curiosity. I'm curious, so how does like COVID do this, that, or the other thing to the body? Am, am, I, am I gonna lose my taste and smell? And when does that usually happen? Which I did, and it was day at the end of day three. Um, I'm back to around 60% smell and taste today. And two days ago, I was at zero. So yeah. That happened, but I'm just curious about it. 
When am I expect? How long is that going to be out? And then realizing the gift we have with taste and smell. The, my brain, I'm like, if I can fully taste and smell, what are the things that I really want to fully taste and smell ASAP? And you probably know if you watch me on Instagram. I want to make sure I'm smelling that plumeria in Lakes Park while it's in bloom. I want to make sure I'm smelling the gardenias, the sweet almond, uh, the roses in the rose garden. These are all like top can't wait to get out there and smell these things again. I want to make sure that I'm tasting this delightful kale salad they have with hazelnuts and cheese in it down at Bartulia in Naples. It's like high. I want to have the quiche at Blue Provence. I made this list of all these things. This is helping me keep my mental game up, giving me some hope, something to look forward to, even through the doldrums of the worst, which was probably for me mentally was day three. The moment the smell went, I'm like, oh my gosh, how, what else is going to happen? And it's that kind of mindset that we're trying to mm, battle against. Does that make sense? So just making sure that I'm keeping these things going. Um, we're blessed. We live in Florida. So I'm able to go out and sit on our lanai, which is basically a porch. And during the last part of the day, the sun's over there. So I'm getting my influx of real integrated vitamin D, which is critical towards the healing process. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But Really critically, I'd love to challenge you on these things. First, what are you doing? What's on your list if you're going to create your list or if you have your list or you're going to make a list to really assure you're taking care of your sleep? Prime goal, keeping your sleep, going after it, making sure the people around you are helping with that, not hindering from that. In some situations, I totally understand. It's like, you don't understand. We got three kids. They're little. Um, during the day, they are not going to be quiet. That's just how it goes. Okay, well, then we got to accommodate for it. Double down on hydration. What are you eating? What are you not eating? Next, what are you doing to keep your emotions, your mental state, your spirit up, especially around day three, day four, day five? If it's a long one, you know, you're looking at day six, seven, eight. Luckily for me, I'm on, what is it, day seven-ish, and I'm feeling uh, really good mentally, and I've been really keeping those things um, up. Another side note, I've been exploring deeply just how to take the best notes. I'm taking, I take great notes, as you probably know, from our trainings and so on that I've shared in that realm. But I'm like, ooh, what can I do here better? What other new tools are out there? Part of me just loves to explore tech, and I just sit there quietly, sucking on my Ricolas, and I'll show you those in a minute, and I'm taking notes, and I'm looking at what better ways to do some of the things. So I'm just kind of aiming to live into what we talk about in high performance. And that really helps my mental game as opposed to sitting there watching something like Ozark, which quality show-wise, keeping you intrigued and storyline and everything, great. But boy, does that, it left me with a negative overtone. I was like, no, this is not my show. <laughs> this is like, I could spend, it's like 40 hours of total time on these seasons, spending it on there and feel like, the because it, it helps you focus on parts of the world that are negative and neutral, like the drug lords and stuff like this. And I'm like, I don't want to be focusing in on that. I'd much rather be focusing in on what everywhere, everything all at once is doing, which is really helping you really understand the, um, the, the short amount of time and the blessing we have in this universe. Such a good movie. And then other things like it that, tw that pique my interest. So I've been studying Everyday Astronaut. He's a YouTube channel. And I got to learn exactly how rockets are made. I've never known how, how a rocket's made and why. And how it burns fuel without burning the actual rocket encasing itself. Got to learn that. I uh, got to see Mr. Beast with his brand new video uh, around him building Charlie's Chalk Factory. It was like amazing. And he uses that as a launch. So I reverse engineered his launch and got to sort out all that, which was so cool. But you see this stuff, just sitting there quietly in what we call sofa heaven, our big sofa bank, if you will. I'm just sitting there studying and learning and going after it. Joyful curiosity keeping my mental game up. So my challenge for you is what is it for you? If you're feeling great, if you're not feeling great, that you're doing to keep your mental game up, what are you doing that demonstrates or drives hope for you? That That's something that you might be curious about. And maybe now that I have some time on my hands because I can't really do much else and I'm in quarantine, um, I'm going to do some research here and sort this out. Is this helpful? So good. Thank you so much for being here with me. I love to look at life's what life dishes me is a lesson and then breaking it down, sharing with you kind of my practices. Hopefully there's some takeaways here 
as we think this through. So the third element is what are the vitamins, minerals, supplements? What's the consistent routine? So through the work that I did early on when, when um, the pandemic started, Dr. John played an instrumental role in laying out a kind of formula, if you will, to assure that we were doing the right things at the biological level for our being to um, sort of arm ourselves to not let this thing dip too far down to the point of what you would have to go in the hospital, for example, to be put on some form of um, oxygen to get your oxygen levels up. By the way, I was measuring my oxygen through all this, never went below 92. And that's through the, this, which they give you like a plus or minus five. So I probably was never below like 94-ish in terms of my O2 levels. Um, just so you have a side note on that, because that was a huge deal. So the concept was, what are the, the essential ingredients? And then more importantly, this is something I learned from John. I also learned it from Marcus and then from my good friend who's in the vitamin industry for 20 plus years. What is the bioabsorption look like? And some are water soluble, which means that they dissolve and they sort of integrate into your being with water. Others are fat soluble, which means that you need to open the sort of door in your digestive tract through fat based substances to sort of give the vitamin something to connect to as it goes into and gets integrated and absorbed into your body. Does that make sense? And so we had to develop a plan that would assure that it wasn't just, I love the way Dr. John pointed, he said, we don't want you peeing expensive. We don't want your urine being expensive, <laughs> something like that, because you're just peeing out these expensive vitamins. And then I asked Dr. John specifically to go through and give me the vitamins that he felt were of the highest grade because there's, there's less expensive and less costly and less powerful, he had explained it to me, versions of like vitamin B12. And then there's the more powerful. And I learned this a lot through our work in high performance as well. So what I'm gonna do right now is I've got all the vitamins that I take and I'm just gonna kind of walk through them with you. And I wanna also share with you how they help me when I have a migraine. And let me make sure that I have the, there it is. These two are pretty critical. And I don't know if you can see them, but I'll make sure to take pictures. I also have links to all these below. Most of these I get on Amazon. This is a uh, Jaro Formulas, which is a vitamin company. I think it's out of Germany. The Dr. John highly recommend. And my other two people that I've, I've referenced highly recommend that company for great quality vitamins that are higher in bioabsorption overall. Presuming that if you're having a fat soluble vitamin, that you're having it with some form of fat. And just so you know, for me, um, I'll have either an almond milk based s substance and or cheese, primarily um, Swiss cheese, like European Swiss cheese. And I'll roll it and I'll have it with, sometimes I'll have it with a little bit of meat in the middle, no bread, just that. And I'll have a couple of those and then I'll have my vitamins to sort of open the gateway for fat absorption in that regard. So zinc, and magnesium. Now these are my go-to if I sense or I'm in the middle of having a migraine, like the aura part of a migraine. Just so you know, when you get a migraine, the aura, for a lot of people, they have a vision thing happen first and then the pain kicks in as soon as the vision thing goes away, that's what I get. So I have an aura, which looks like a um, kaleidoscope, essentially, right in the middle of your field of vision. Usually it starts on the uh, right side, I think is how that plays out. And it's like just a little speck and all of a sudden you can't see like when you're looking at words, there's just a um, kaleidoscope in place of you looking at letters of something. It's a weird thing. And then it, over the course of 30 minutes, it does this. So if I'm looking at you, I'm seeing this thing grow out and then it gets fat, if you will. And then it comes out here and then it goes and eventually, it feels like somebody just turned the lights on and you're sleeping. When it gets out to here, this is the way your eyes are kind of dealing with it. And then all of a sudden it goes bloop and it disappears. And then it's like somebody hit you in the head with a hammer, like instantly. And that's how it used to be for me, previous to me dialing in my lifestyle. And now the moment I get a migraine, I used to take Tylenol, I take one of these and one of these, the moment I get the eye part to it, and I may or may not even feel any pain when the eye part goes away. And it, the cleaner that I've been eating, the better that chance is. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? So really critical if you're getting migraines is, and this is something you can read about, most of the time there's a magnesium deficiency in people's bodies when they have a migraine, um, is what the studies have shown. And magnesium, this particular one is Swanson. And again, I'll make sure to link to everything below 
and zinc, really critical. Zinc's really powerful for helping, what the way Dr. John explained it to me was to help um, attack virus in body and remove, essentially. And then magnesium is a critical ingredient for health. Muscle and bone health is what it says here, but also the others. So this supports the immune function, muscle and bone. These two are critical for me. Next up is these three. And I had Dr. John do the research to figure out what was the best vitamin C he found through the bioabsorption lens. And it was this pure radiance, 100% nat natural vitamin C. Like they ground up things that are um, berry extract, roots, cherry extracts. They ground them up, put them in these capsules. And this is the one that uh, has worked out great for the last couple of years since I was recommended to him. So I'm taking one of each of the those, and then I'm taking these. And again, I'm not a doctor. This is I'm not any form of ist, so this is just what works for me. I'm not giving you a medical advice. I'm just telling you, here's what I do, and here's how it helps me heal up and be fast, or get feel better faster. <laughs> so vitamin C, pure radiance, 100% natural. This I get on Amazon. So I'm taking this, and what Dr. John said is you got to think of it like you're supplying the front end line to attack and remove the bad guys out of your system. And vitamin C is the ammo. So when you're in a sick state, you need to be taking these instead of maybe once per day, as which I usually do. You need to be taking these once every four to six hours. And you want to check with your doctor to make sure that it's not too much or whatever. Um, from what I understand, it doesn't harm you if you take too many, but I'm not a doctor, so I have no idea. <laughs> And then vitamin B12, which is critical for me. For me personally, I found out that when I got my sleep about 11 years ago and I started really dialing in sleep, that I still had fatigue sometimes. And that fatigue was because I didn't have, I had a vitamin B12 deficiency. So Jaro, again, the German manufacturer, B12, methylcobalin B12. Um, and it's the meth kind of B12 that's the higher end instead of the cyano based B12, which is the lower end from the way I was described. So I'm taking that and I take two of those a day. So I'll take one in the morning and one in the afternoon. I'm taking those every about four hours, four to six hours when I'm sick. These things get ramped up. Otherwise, I'm just taking one of these a day. Does that make sense? So I'm doubling down on B12 and I'm quad, quad doubling, quadding down <laughs> on uh, vitamin C. So the, and then vitamin D, of course, really critical for helping your body uh, handle things. Now I'm taking this D3, Nature's Made, and I'm also getting out in the sun for 20 minutes. If that just means me sitting on the porch or the lanai as we call it down here. Um, there's a couple other ones that I was recommended to take. Whoops. And vitamin K2, which is critical for calcium transport into the bones. And there's a great video, and I'll make sure to link to it below, of Dr. John explaining how K2 works works for your body and how in the United States, especially we're very low in K2 just because of the way we eat. Um, NAC sustain. This is an antioxidant and, uh, glutathione <laughs> precursor supports liver and lung function and really critical for me. Uh, my family's known to have issues with pneumonia. My grandpa passed away from it. My dad's dad. Um, and we have, I've had pneumonia throughout my history, like twice. And I have to be really careful with the lungs. One of the reasons why I run is it's one of the best ways to build CO2 capacity and build lung strength. But I'm also on supplements that help with lung function. And NAC Sustain, again, I'll link and I'll take a picture and zoom in on these, and vitamin K2. These are the critical ingredients there. A couple other things that I wanted to share. Um, for a while, and I've had this go on and off over the years, I've had a, a candida overgrowth is what it's called. It's like a yeast in the body. And it would come out in here, here, and I'd have oozing going on. And it was oregano oil, nature's way oregano oil, that finally solved for this. And I have to thank Janie from our mastery community for recommending that because her daughter had that. And this was one of the only things that helped her. So I'll take oregano oil if I'm feeling a, um, and it's weird, but it's, there's a certain feeling I get when I start to feel a candida overgrowth. And you can research what that is if you're interested in it. But this works out great. And I don't take this unless I'm feeling it. Um, I don't just take oregano oil. And then Dr. John also recommended Sambucus, elderberry, for really front-ending, helping your body handle viral infection and overload. Um, and so this is the Nature's Way Sambucus Standard Elderberry. This is a chewable 
and this has worked out great. It does have zinc in it as well and vitamin C. So it has like 68% per, um, oh, serving size is two gummies. So for two gummies, it has 68% um, of your zinc and then 100% of your vitamin C. And then the, the elderberry also helps according to that. So when I got up the other night, as I was saying, and really owned that, where I was having that burning, just killing me, the burning going on, um, I took two of the gummies, went through all of the vitamins. Before I had any of that, I pre sort of got my body ready by having, um, I think I did the cheese rolls with like salami in the middle, had three of those. And then I think I even had a hobnob, which is a, it's a British cookie that's kind of oaty, so that it would give me a little more substance. Then I loaded up and then I sat for a while, drank some water. And then I sat for a while, kind of let it absorb, make sure everything was okay. So I was kind of freaking out a little bit. And then I went to bed and woke up and I felt literally a hundred times better. So that. Now, one of the things that Marcus recommended for the high performance side of things. Now, you may remember Brennan had a high performance line of vitamins. And for some reason, he's taken them offline. And um, I don't know that he's ever bringing them back. But he recommended Qualia Mind. And he said these were really helping him. And I took them and they really helped through the mental lens of more clarity. Um, especially if I have a huge day of coaching. And a huge day for me might mean six coaching sessions and two meetings. So a total of eight meetings. And those meetings might be an hour, hour and a half. So basically a 10 hour day. I will assure that I'm on my vitamins, my sleep, hydration, all that. And that I've got these going on. And these have really helped as well. Now they're, they're loaded with things that help uh, the neuro the neural nets, <laughs> your neurons work better in your brain, but then they also have vitamin C, D3, these kind of things. And it's the um, higher grade B12 in these as well as, as you would imagine. They're kind of expensive. I'll make sure to link to these. Now these, I wouldn't take every day of the week and that's what um, I was recommended, but I do take them three to five times a week. So I take them like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday would be an example. If it's a, just a heavy front of a couple days, like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for sure. And it really helps me stay on my game to make sure that I'm feeling 10 out of 10. Is that helpful? Is going through all these vitamins, minerals and everything. And now these, again, these have worked for me. I've tried over the last decade, I've tried every type of anything that's ever been recommended to me. And I've, I'm constantly assessing on what actually feels like it works. These are what worked for me. Now it could be that it's a mental game. And my brain says it's working and it's not really doing squat, but I do feel better when I take these vitamins and I do feel better when I'm sick and I take this and I dial in everything as I've been talking this through with you. Is that helpful? So I'd love for you, if you have a practice, please share below. Again, I'm not a doctor and I'm not making any recommendations. I'm just sharing with you what works for me. So there's a consistent routine to it and I've gone over that. The foods, what I eat and what I stay away from. In my brain, I've thought about all the foods that I've ever eaten through three lenses. Green, meaning these I can eat as much and as often and they're good for me. Carrots, celery, blueberries, bananas. Well, maybe not as much as I want because you can overdose on bananas and other things. <laughs> but you get what I mean. These are good all the time. Kale. Um, my kale shake, which I'll break down for you in a minute, these kind of things. Then there's the yellow foods and these are things like potato chips. Um, and then there's the red foods and these are things like certain breads that I just don't get along with, but are so tasty. And I know if I'm eating those that it's, it's very limited and enjoy each bite. That's how my brain thinks about it. When I'm in a sick state, like I've been in for the last week, all yellow and reds whoosh, over here. I'm fully focused on green. I might have a little yellow here and there. I had um, potato chips, for example, just I needed something salty to kind of cut what was going on. But otherwise it's just, and I'm having, um, and I'll put a link to it and a picture of it. It's a coconut based yogurt that's really delicious. And I'll put berries in it. And then I'll sometimes put a little granola in it just to give it a little bit of substance. And that's my breakfast. And then for lunch, I typically do my high performance shake and at dinner, I'm eating lean protein and a vegetable and that's about it. So it could be chicken. It could be, um, like a fish. It could be, we had a steak the other night that just sounded so good. I don't usually eat a lot of red meat, but that really helped. And I'm eating really lean 
and keeping my body just in a good state, um, hydrated and in a lean, clean energy state, if that makes sense. So that's how that works. Now let's break down the high performance shake. For me, it's very simple. I get bag kale and I'll try to get a picture and put it in for us here. And I get that kale generally from Whole Foods. And then I also have three different powders I put in it. So I'll put the kale in first. I put two thirds of the kale in and I create a little like pocket. <laughs> and then I put in these three um, Vega Sport Protein. So it says like a full cup or whatever. I put in a th uh, third of a cup of the little thing they have there. And then I put in this Green Blends Alkalize and Detox. It's amazing grass. I'll make sure to link these. I get all these on Amazon. And I've been doing that for the last three years, this particular setup. And I also put in Vega One All-in-One Shake that kind of completes the nutrient-rich profile. And I put in about half a cup of that. And that really helps. So kale goes in first. I put in each of these. And once that's done, I fill the rest with kale. And then I have these wild organic blueberries. And they're frozen and they're in a big bag and I get those from Whole Foods. And I load like, I would say at the top of the blender, it's probably a good inch of just that. So the shakes are generally dark green. You can see the blue in them from the blueberries. And then I'll put in a banana on top. And then as far as the liquid goes, I put in, um, in the Turvis tumbler of this size, I'll put in up to here of coconut water. And then I'll put in basically three rings, or however much that is. Maybe it's about half or a third of a container of almond milk, organic almond milk. And I'll put that in there. And then I'll blend that up so it's nice and smooth. And then I'll pour the bulk of it in that same turbis tumbler that I got the coconut water and almond milk in. And then I will um, pour it back into that and I'll usually have some left over. So I just work that. Now when I, this is really critical, I learned this from a couple of high performance coaches early on. 2013, 2014. Thanks to um, Amy, Terry, and oh, I'm trying to think of his name. Can so, so see his face. He's went to University of Michigan. Well, I'll have to I'll have to thank him in the notes. <laughs> and they were really critical about making sure that you let when you have your shake that you're chewing it to get the mouth digestion going early on. So I'll take a swig and I'll kind of simulate chew it, if you will, because it's liquid and just let it marinate and then swallow it. And I've done that, I've trained myself to do that over the years to really get the bioabsorption going from the front end all the way down. Is that helpful? Really, really cool when it comes to that. The final thing that I wanted to make sure of, and this is finally something that's helped, was these Ricola Dual Action um, Relieve Sore Throat and Soothe Cough. These are the only things that I found that were semi-decent in terms of ingredients. Um, that were loaded with just crap, even though there is starch, sugar, and stuff like starch, syrup, and sugar in these, um, that really work. Like when I have that itch, which I've had many times in the last week, so Ricola dual action, cough suppressant, these I got on Amazon, I'll put a link to them below. They actually work. So when I'm in the coaching calls over the last week, I'm putting them in. And I have to do it around 20, 30 minutes in. I'm putting them in, I'm muting, coughing a little bit, unmuting, getting all that going. These things actually work. Middle of the night, wake up in a coughing fit, which has happened. These things work. So I hope through everything I've covered for you, we've got quite the list here of things that will really help move things forward for you. Again, I'm not a doctor. This is just me reporting to you exactly what's worked for me. Really, really cool. So hopefully on the food side, you know. And then the final piece to steps to feeling better fast is keeping, as I've mentioned, I really try to hit this out of the park early on, keeping the mental game hopeful, joyful, curious, even though I felt like absolute crap for 40 hours solid. I was, I'm like, uh, I couldn't even really move. Just getting off the sofa heaven, as we call it. I was like, ah, uh, I felt like a robot just because I couldn't breathe deep. I kind of went over all that. So I really wanted to make sure that I had things that sparked my interest. And I gotta tell you, I was not in the mood day one of that heavy duty part to look at any of that, but eventually came around, got it, got on a couple YouTube everyday astronaut videos, got my brain out of my sickness and into learning new things, felt a lot better for it. 
So this ends the training aspect of it. Now I have my own action list and I've kind of touched on it and then we have our big action list. So let's go into my action list and then your action list. My action list, as soon as I recognize I'm sick, I've got everything secured. Um, generally I already have it, but sometimes because I don't get sick that often, things have expired. So I got my punch list on Amazon or if somebody's going to the store, I'll send them out nose spray. What I've discovered is Afrin nose spray and I will not use it unless it's absolutely necessary is amazing for cutting sinus, like drainage, but more importantly, reducing the inflammation in the sinuses so I can breathe while I sleep. So I try not to use Afrin during the day if I need to, and I try not to use it more than three days at any given time just because of its uh, possible effect on permanent damage in your sinuses. But this stuff has worked great for the sinus infections that do produce phlegm, unlike what I experienced with COVID. Um, vitamins, tissues, contact list. So I'm making sure that through the lens of the vitamins I've already gone over, the tissues, I've got stuff around me, all that's here. Um, but then I'm looking at my contact list to say, okay, if I need to move appointments, what's that look like? And I drop a list immediately to say, um, some of the appointments that are coming up, I know that they're not in a, it's not a growth thing for them, that we're in a point where I can move that a week and it won't potentially be as damaging to their growth journey as it, with others. Does that make sense? So I'm kind of prioritizing for that. Um, pretty good assessment now that I've done almost 5,000 sessions of high performance coaching and then in my other work as well. Just moving things back a week because I need to create the runway for rest and reset, rejuvenate, recharge. I also ask and think through, is this viral related or bacterial related? If it's viral related, there's not much I can do. Got to ride this course. If it's bacterial related, which is what I used to get a lot of with, um, and it's so weird, drinking a lot of milk back in the day would clog up my ears and they would get ear infections. I get them a lot. And when I stopped drinking milk, the ear infection stopped. Isn't that interesting? So that's more of a bacterial thing. And so when it's, if it's a bacterial thing, I do try to do what I've talked about and that's burn it out. And that's my words, <laughs> but I do go, if, if I'm not in a state where I'm completely tanked for energy and fatigued, I will go out and run and I'll run extra fast to get the, um, heart rate up, but also to just get things flowing and moving. And that has helped me immensely over the last decade. Um, I, I would say it's sh shortened and even eliminated a lot of bacterial based ear kind of things that I've had over the years. Um, next up is two to three times H2O and half the eating. We've gone over that. Sleep and naps ASAP. I barely take any kind of naps ever. Like I said, I've taken two in the last week. Adjust all workflows and commitments. Um, I'm always looking for day three, four, and five of a sickness. Days one and two, if I can talk and I'm there mentally, we're on a good path. But days three, four, and five, I'm like, you know what? I got to give myself some runway and I need to move those a week later or more, depending on the severity of what's showing up. So I'm, I'm flowing for that. Joyful curiosity we've covered. Sunshine, sunshine times three, 20 minutes each. So aiming to get out and at least sit in the sunshine for 20 minutes, um, just letting it overcome me stimulate vitamin D. I always feel so much better outside when there's any kind of anything in the head. Um, primarily because in Florida we have the air conditioning all the time and the humidity level is low. Higher humidity with na uh, nasal based problems and, and things up in the head tends to make me feel a lot better. <laughs> so I hope that helps. And then no dairy or beige and we've gone over that. That's kind of my action list. Hopefully that helps. Finally, your action list. Create your Operation Restore Health VSPA document. I hope I've given you a ton of fuel today. Second, build your checklist. Boom, 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 boom. Here's how that's going to work. We've gone over sleep, hydration, eating, the core goals of keeping our mental, the details of the vitamins. Begin building your habits. So for example, over a decade ago, I wasn't taking any kind of vitamins on an enduring basis. I'd take some here, some there, and it was all over the place. And I did not know the quality of difference and how to bioabsorb and all that kind of stuff. So I built those habits. So when it goes to sick time, I'm just up in some things, down up sleep, down up hydration, assessing, dealing with the symptoms, working through it. Test and measure, improve or remove and ask for help. If you want me to help you build your vision, strategy and planning document for Operation Restore Health, let me know. Happy to. So happy to report that I've made it through a sickness. I'm able to report out the things that have worked and the things that have kept me at a five or above so that I was still able to function and help 
and serve and take care of. But if I couldn't, I get it. Then I would have to read, you know, schedule appointments and do that. But I was able to stay at a five or above, even through the fever days, which was pretty heavy duty. That said, if there's anything I can do to help direct or guide, let me know. I will talk to you in a little bit as we get into our vision business training, where we're going to dive deep on building the culture statement. And I'm going to share with you my exact culture statement. We're going to break it down so that you have a way to establish who you want in your business, both from the team side and the customer side, and who you don't, which is critical towards having a really wonderful business that crushes. That said, we'll hit that, and then we'll hit our Zoom roundtable to answer any questions, serve, and support you. We'll talk to you then. Take care. Awesome. We rocked it.